What I'm really going to talk to you about today is how an addiction developed into a calling. I'm addicted to visual design objects of all kind, especially graphic design. Graphic design has evolved into this multidisciplinary area where typography is still the lingua franca, it's still the language that everybody speaks and understands, but uh, ultimately uh, it's becoming, it's, it's fusing into other media that are going to envelop it and it will be partly envelop. And it will be, still be there, but it will be lots of other things. Like all graphic designers, I revere type and typography. And I've collected typographic artifacts of all kinds, from the influential old metal foundries like Deberny Pignot in France, to the so-called vernacular of everyday objects like bus and subway signs. Typographic styles are indicators of certain types of culture and tracing the timeline is endlessly fascinating. A woman named Beatrice Ward many decades ago called typography a crystal goblet. It's a container that is transparent. And while a lot of what goes on today is not transparent at all, it's very noisy, it's very verbose, which is great. Uh, graphic design to the average person is that thing that they pass every day and they, you know, they'll acknowledge the thing it's saying, but they won't acknowledge the form that it's set in. And that's what graphic design is supposed to be. We're all influenced by what's around us. And we're even more influenced when somebody is pulling strings and manipulating us. And Iron Fists was my attempt to show how graphic design fit into the manipulation that affects us all on a grand scale, democracies and totalitarian regimes, but specifically how uh, the Nazis and Italians and the communists managed to get into our heads with these paper bullets. As designers, we make marks. One of the most horrific yet enigmatic marks is the swastika. The Nazis used it. Hitler claimed credit for it, but it has a long history. A benign history that is manifest in places like the Idaho Corn Palace in the United States. It burned down owing to the methane given off by the decaying corn that formed the arabesques on the outside of the building. Only the swastika survived. Or the girls club emblem and how to get it. And they had a title of their magazine, which was the swastika. Today, there are slightly more righteous applications though in questionable taste. So I wrote the book, The Swastika, A Symbol Beyond Redemption, to explore the com complex narrative of the symbol and develop what I call a critical history. Rather than being an exhaustive scholarly inquiry, it's a question about the symbol's ability to be reclaimed and changed into its original form. My mom collected things. So if there's a genetic impression, that may have been it, but I think it just came from wanting, not having the talent to make the stuff, so I just got the stuff. And then over time, included it in what I do. I collect to fulfill an, some neurotic obsession to be sure, but like many collectors, there must also be a loftier rationale. But my reason for collecting is to make books, articles, and exhibitions. This is one based on Art Deco, an Art Deco series I did with my wife, Louise Feely. And here's another example. One day I found myself collecting mini mannequins, or what I call sculptures of commerce. They came in all shapes and a few sizes. Most were clothed with professionally tailored miniature garments. And this one for Lego tards is my favorite, second only to the lady in red so beautifully articulated next to her. And between you and me, we're all friends here, uh, they come alive at night and we talk a lot. <laughs> well, I love design Adaba. And what's more, I think the multidisciplinary approach is essential because otherwise we just become so damn insulated. I mean, that was my fear in giving this particular talk that I talk to a certain group and I try to talk to a larger group. Even when I write and I write for the New York Times, my audience is not supposed, supposedly we're supposed to be just designers alone. It's, it's a larger group. So uh, design in Daba is just this wonderful uh, experience 
uh, that is orchestrated to give us a breadth of knowledge and, and understanding.